Did you know that if you were 18 years old with a few bucks in your pocket, you could go down to Las Vegas and rent a Lamborghini Diablo for the day, drive it around for a while and have some fun? But at the end of the day, you would have to take the car back to the dealership and you'd have to pay rental on the car for a day. This is the first of a series of five videos on finance. Okay, so let's consider our young person going to Las Vegas and renting this fancy car for a day. It's very similar to what people do when they actually rent money. Yes, you can rent money. But the amount of money you rent isn't called a car, it's called the principal. That's the amount of money that you rent. And the rental you pay on the principal is called interest. And so at the end of the day, you owe the principal that you borrowed plus the interest on that principal. And so we've got some vocabulary. Simple interest. P stands for principal. It's the initial investment, sometimes called present value. A is the amount that you owe at the end of the day. It's after interest was earned. So the amount is the principal plus the interest. Put them together, you have the amount. It's kind of like what you would owe the car dealership at the end of the day. I means interest in dollars. That would be the rental on the car. And there's a formula to figure out how many dollars of interest you would owe. Interest in dollars is PRT, the principal, times the interest rate, times the time in years. I is the interest in dollars. R is the interest rate per year as a decimal. And T is the time in years. So if it was five months, then it would be five twelfths, because five months is five twelfths of a year. If it was 20 days, then T would be 2360 fifths, because a day is a 360 fifth of a year. So the fractions come into play as well. Now, the amount you would owe at, at when all is said and done is the principal that was borrowed plus the interest. So the amount A is the principal plus interest, but we know that this I is PRT. So we could replace it. The amount is P plus PRT. So we might see this formula written like this. But we know that we could common factor out the P, and so we might even see it written like this. Multiply this out, write a line, check a line. So multiply this out, we have P plus PRT. The idea of compounding. Suppose a principal was invested for a period of time, say, five years. After a part of that time has passed by, say one month, that principal has earned some interest. In this example, the interest period would be one month because we're examining the, the investment after one month. So the interest period is a month. The process of calculating the interest earned by a principal and then adding that interest to the account so that it too begins to earn its own interest. This is called compounding, the process of calculating interest and adding it to the principal. Now there's a formula for compound interest. And it's this, a equals p times one plus i to the exponent n. And we can see that it's an exponential function. And so we know what its graph looks like already. 
it would be the population of the Earth type. So, we know what A stands for. We know what P stands for. I is the interest rate not per year, but the interest rate per interest period. So if we were compounding every month, I would be the interest rate per month. That would be a twelfth of the annual rate. And N is the number of interest periods that pass by during the entire life of the investment. So we know what A, P, I, and N stand for in the compound interest formula. I have an example here, which consists of four mini examples. Each row here is an investment. Down here, I've, I've tried to display the relationship between the different variables in these pyramids, in these triangles. R, the interest rate per year, is the number of periods per year times I. So we multiply across the bottom to get the top. Or we might say that I, the interest rate per interest period, is the annual rate divided by the number of periods in a year. So we can get the bottom by dividing the top by the other bottom. This, these two triangles don't really need to be memorized because it stands, they both stand to reason. Common sense would tell you the answer. What I mean by that is this. Suppose that the number of periods per year was 12. So something's happening every month, 12 times a year. Periods per year here is 12. And the number of years is 2. So something happens 12 times a year for 2 years, Common sense will tell you that we'll go 2 times 12. N must be 24 because it's number of periods per year times year. So common sense would have told you that the number of periods would have been 12 times 2, 24. But in case you do need it displayed for you in a format that maybe you, you could write down, these pyramids are designed so that multiply across the bottom to get the top, or if you want the bottom corner here, divide the top by this side to give it to you. If you want this I, take R, divide here. Let's do this first one. Something happens annually. This is compounding. It happens annually. Let's say once a year for this investment. And it happens five times. That's what N means. How many times did it get compounded? It happened n times, five times. So if something happens once a year, and it happened five times, how many years is that? Well, how many years does it take for you to have five birthdays? They happen once a year, too. The term in years is five years. The interest rate, well, we could look down here. The R stands for interest rate as a decimal. It's the number of periods per year multiplied by I. Well, once a year times I would be 5%. That's 5% per year. Let's do to the next, let's go to the next investment. Something happens monthly. That would be 12 times a year. And it happens for three years at an interest rate of 6%. I, here it is here. It's the interest rate divided by the number of periods per year. So that would be the interest rate 0 0.06, because it's 6%. So 0 0.06 divided by the periods in a year, which is 12. So 0 0.06 divided by 12 on a calculator, if necessary, is 0 0.005. And if something happens 12 times a year for three years, common sense tells us 12 times 3. N must be 36. 
And that's how we reason all of these. Let's do the next one. How often is something compounded? If it takes eight years to happen 16 times. Well, common sense again. In eight years, term in years, eight, and it happens 16 times. That's how many times it happened. Hmm, how many times a year? Well, we could go to the formula and put n to be 16 and term in years here to be 8 and go 16 divided by 8. That would be twice a year. So over here, we twice a year is called semi-annually. And the I value is 0.04. The interest rate, we multiply across the bottom. Periods per year which is 2 times i, which is 0.04. That means it's 0.08 as a decimal, so 8% then. They're all reasoned similarly. Next, something happens twice a year and with an interest rate of 4%, and it happens a total of 10 times. Hmm. How many years does it take? Term in years. How many years does it take for something to happen twice a year and it happens a total of 10 times? Well, if it happens 10 times, twice a year, common sense, a lot of people would just say, hmm, it happened 10 times twice a year, that's five years. But you might think, have to go, okay, great. And here is 10 compounded periods per year 2, 10 divided by 2, 5, 5 years. So the I value would be 0.04 divided by 2. So 0.02 would be the I value. Let's move to an example, a word problem. June borrowed five grand from the bank for three years with interest calculated at 9% slash A. That means 9% per annum, which means 9% per year because annum is related to the word annually and annually means once a year. So interest is calculated at 9% per year. That's the way it's always expressed, by the way. Compounded semi-annually. How much does Juno after three years? So here we have a paragraph which is like one of those lines in the chart. How much interest must she pay on this loan? Okay. One reads this question and sees these words. Compounded interest. Compounded semi-annually. As soon as you see compounded, you know you're going to need this formula. And all we have to do is figure out the A, the P, the I, and the N. Well, she borrowed five grand, so the principal must be 5,000. Next, we need the I value. To figure out the I value, we know that it's the annual rate, which is 0 0.09, divided by the number in a year, which is 2. So it'll be 0 0.09 divided by 2. The I value here is 0 0.045. Next, we'll need the N. Well, if we have three years and something happens twice a year for three years, common sense tells us that N must be 6. twice a year for three years. We take these numbers and plug them into this compound interest formula, thusly. Notice one plus I is really easy because it's always one decimal, whatever I is as a decimal. Here it is, one decimal zero four five. A calculator exercise brings us to the answer. 
June owes $6,511.30 after three years. And how much of this is interest? Well, here's a hint. 5000 is the principal. And so how much does this exceed $5,000? It exceeds it by $1,511.30. So that's how much interest is being paid. Let's go to the next example. May wants to have 10 grand in three years to pay for college. She's got $7,000 now and is shopping on the internet for interest rates. What interest rate does she need to the nearest hundredth of a percentage point to achieve her goal if interest is compounded? quarterly. Hmm. Well, we see the word compounded in the word problem. So we know this. We're going to need this formula, the compound interest formula. And we need the A, the P, the I, and the N. Well, she wants to have 10 grand in three years. So the amount she wants her investment to mature to be $10,000 at a later date. So the A is 10,000, the amount. The principal, that's the amount of money she's going to invest now, is the $7,000. The N, well, let's just think for a moment. Three years, and it's compounded quarterly. So if something quarterly means four times a year. So if something happens four times a year for three years, then the N value must be 12, four times a year for three years. And what we seek is the I value. So we plug them all in to the formula and we have to solve this, this equation for i. And maybe it's a bit of a trick. So let's take a look at this little math trick. We want to figure out i. So first we'll start moving everything away from the i so that we're left with just i. So we, we move the 7,000 first. And we don't subtract it. We divide it underneath the 10,000. Like that. And then our calculator gives us this decimal. 1 plus i to the 12th is equal to 10 over 7, 1.42857. Next, we have to take this equation and figure out what i is. To do that, we have to get rid of this. We have to, it's buried, and we have to dig it out. So we have to take the 12th root both sides. Raise both sides to the exponent 1 12th. So the entire side is in square brackets to the 1 12th. The entire side is to the 1 12th. Now in this configuration, these exponents multiply by each other. So 12 twelfths is 1. So the left side is easy. It's 1 plus i. And the right side is done on a calculator. Do it yourself. Don't take my word for it. And now, figuring out i is now very simple. We take 1 away from both sides, and we have an i value. And if you said she needs 3% interest, you'd do fairly well. But that's not quite right, because this is per interest period, remember. i is the interest rate per period. So we'll have to take 4 times that because it's compounded quarterly. So there's four periods in a year. So to turn it into an annual rate, we'll go four times i on a calculator and now turn this into a percentage. She needs an interest rate of 12.0% per year, or slash a, to reach her goal. Will she find this? No, she's not going to find that. It's not likely that, that she'll be able to find an institution that pays 12% per year to reach her goal. 
So what she's asking of her money here isn't, isn't reasonable. She can't expect to reach her goal. Moving on, example four. How long will it take $5,000 to grow to $12,000 if interest is compounded monthly at 8% a year? Well, we see the word compounded, so immediately we write the formula. Now, we want to take 5,000 to grow to 12,000. So the amount, after time has passed, amount is 12,000. The principal, the amount that we're going to invest, is $5,000. Monthly means 12 times a year, but we don't know how for how many years. So N is a question mark, but I isn't. I is the annual rate divided by 12 times a year. So it'll be 0 0.08 divided by 12. And that's 0 0.00667. So we'll need to find N because that's what we seek. So we'll plug them all into the formula. And now we have to take this equation and figure out N. Hmm. Remove everything away from N. We start with the 5,000. 12,000 divided by 5,000 is 2.4. And now, if you recall, in this configuration to solve for N, we do a little trick with logarithms. N is log over log. Log 2.4 divided by log 1.00667. Use a calculator, n is 131.7. But let's recall now, n is the number of periods. And since it's compounded monthly, n is the number of months. So it's not many months, which is about 11 years when you divide by 12. It will take about 11 years.